Hello. Uh, now we move on to the new topic. One of my favorite one called software IC. What do I mean that by that? Okay, <laughs> I'm not sure if any. Oh, not ID. Software IC. Okay. You know IC right? Kind of cheap. Uh, in the uh, computer hardware, okay, so uh, kind of integrated circuit, circuit, okay, the most important part of the uh, how computer works, right? But what the software I see means, uh, I I use this idea to let the student know that when we develop the software, okay, if we can design our software as a very reliable module okay just like IC okay and we can reuse it again and again as long as it's a reliable enough efficient enough okay people who want to uh, use my IC just give me a call function call or invoke okay or trigger or and also give you give me your uh, we call it input okay or parameters or argument whatever you call it give me your input and I will give you the output okay and this is actually happening in the computer software design very often uh, maybe you already use in some building uh, software IC maybe not okay so this is uh, the topic we are going to talk about okay uh, most specifically it's we call a function in computer programming okay function and some other uh, related uh, terminology like uh, when you did, did design a lot of function you can create your own Maybe people call it API, application programming interface. Okay. Or maybe some people go, oh, uh, it's uh, in the library. Okay. Library is where you can uh, check out the books, uh, the school's library. But here's library is, means a lot of useful function. Uh, API will design. They are in the kind of uh, uh, memory or storage okay uh, so that you can call you can reuse it okay it's a kind of general idea of it or maybe uh, some may use a module okay uh, which pretty much means the same thing but specifically in writing a program okay when you read the reference, okay, you may know how to define a function, how to use a function, how to call a function. Okay, so let's kind of uh, kind of simplify the idea, uh, illustrate it. Okay. Okay, we know our program run kind of sequential way. Uh, sometimes we do the rule, we do the branch, but function when we do the function we we call a function okay here I mean uh, you invoke the function not maybe in your programming language you not literally say call you just say the function name okay you call a function okay and you want this function uh, already prepare and do something for you okay so of course the function is in another part of memory okay in another part of memory let's assume it's a it's a it's a memory this is a, another memory space okay your program run to here you call function kind of your program kind of temporarily switch to this memory 
Okay, this is a function. And function uh, need to have a name. Otherwise, how do you give the name? Hey, hey, that function. <laughs> no, they will have a name, right? For example, uh, maybe this function in uh, in music it could be as simple as play. Okay, okay, play function. Okay, the play function, they do the job what the play should do. Okay, they will return. Okay. So once you call a play, they jump to the function, they run maybe just uh, a few milliseconds or oh, so tiny, and they return back. You barely notice anything. You keep doing. Okay. So this play function can be can be called many times, just like a normal instruction. But they may work hard. Um, do say who wrote this function? It could be you. User define. You define. It could be uh, some other people you never uh, met before on the internet. They design they open it as a stable library okay maybe your team member other people's okay and one thing i would like to uh kind of kind of uh talk about is that of course if you just call your program just switch to another direction and return back uh, we can give the function some input okay input one input one input two input three etc we call uh, we call it uh, and uh, in programming language uh, when the other place they define a function you need to receive this input okay input one input two Okay. Uh, here I just call it input. They will take receive that input. Okay, and receive the input as a variable. They can they can follow their design because this function may be designed by some other people. They have a, have a use a different name. Okay. And the place we call the input. We so we call this kind of input as an argument. Okay, now argument with fight with other people. No, <laughs> argument. Okay, this part of the definition of input, uh, we call the parameters. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit detail about it. Uh, you don't need to memorize uh, it, but you can simply think oh, function, have a name, function, it can be given input, and some function will do the job for me. And I can, uh, after they finish, they may have a return value. Okay, return value. Okay, okay. And if it's a return value, yeah, it's do have a return value. This function name itself can be a value, okay. Once they return, so you can kind of do this x plus play. Okay, play do something. Also, the like play will return. Maybe um, they return ten. Hmm. Who knows what that 10 is. Maybe they return uh, uh, 60. Uh, return 60. Who knows what 60 is. Okay. If it's in uh, uh, programming about the uh, music, the play 60 could be the MIDI number. Okay. But it depends on the situation. Okay. It depends on the context. Uh, in the different context, the number uh, could be uh, could be meaningful for one case, could be nonsense for another case. Okay, so we need to be aware. <coughs> okay.
Okay, I need to drink some water. So <coughs> that's it. I'll see you uh, in the next session. Bye bye.